Buenos dias and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our Rise of the Robots campaign. It is a bit in a distress and uh, the reason for that being not so much uh, the limitations of only using Sparks and Psyops and Templars, but the consequences of that. I haven't tried the challenge before, so naturally I did not um, automatically do the right build order and their resistance ring that uh, used or tended to be the best starting building really has underperformed in this uh, strategy on top of that and it's interesting because I just reflected about this the using the laboratory rush to get all of the research done as fast as possible in combination with actually uh, having a lot of sparks and psyops and only having those led to a standstill or a deadlock that i haven't uh, seen before here's the deal um, and i want to just let you know before we jump into the mission because that might be interesting if you're trying to replicate it both sparks and psi operatives uh, require alarium and even if you trade in intel you will not be able to feed this hungry machine however also research um, for plasma weapons and uh, the highest armor tier will require alarium and building them up actually requires alarium as well so that's kind of the sparse resource and we're trying to tap too much into that which means although we have enormous research powers we effectively have nine scientists at this point we are now finding ourselves kind of deadlocked because um, the more um, late game research items are effectively not available for us so uh, we cannot really do that without sacrificing the core of what we were trying to do so just want to let you know that that is a thing and if i were to do it over i would probably not do the lab rush and just let the research fall a little bit behind the curve and instead much earlier go for sparks to level them up and also much earlier pull out the um, Templar to do covered ops missions only. But hindsight is always 2020. For now, we're going to go into the Stranded Agents mission Night God, which will give us another engineer and intel, both which we will need. We definitely need to get up the contacts to, I would say, six, seven, eight, so that we can get North America. And uh, once we do have North America, this campaign should be more on the stable side. Hopefully. So we're still not having our Templar because uh, the Hogbite will, for the foreseeable future, only be on covert ops missions so that we at least can get that done. Sucks, but it is what it is. We're going to go in with a lot of rookies. Whether or not they're tired, I couldn't really care less. And Renvin is not going to be one of them. We need him a bit later. Hayward, wow, all of them are tired for one more day. Holy moly. Yeah, let's bound, uh, bind you together with um, Sonar. Speaking about that, where is he? No, oh, he's not here. Covert Ops mission. Damn, too bad. All right, so we're taking XQS 6 and True Rebel on top. So we got at least one pair. Let's ready all of uh, the weapons and see what we can do. So got a Mimic Beacon and a Frag Grenade, that sounds like a good idea. Halo up here and Hunk. Might want to use the blue screen rounds. Uh, let's give him something with an auto loader, perfect. Flashbang Grenade here. Even one more repeater and we got all of the modified weapons. Got a lot of assault rifles. 
and finally also Vector who is going to be our prime spark who is leading the charge very soon we're getting a second one and hopefully if um, the campaign goes long enough we're also getting another Templar and PsyOps uh, which all are in training so that um, will happen sooner than later let's go guys so let's go all right and we are joining uh, the game so good news the game is throwing us a bone as it is trying to give us a really easy mission to begin with one that can be done with rookies so we got to get here mainly rescue the vip we don't need the specialist all too much so i'm okay with not rescuing that one and this here is our high ground that we want to use in order to fight. Excuse 6 is taking the point. True Rebel follows. Halop follows. Hunk moves in as well and the dm finally vector who can simply bypass all of them and jump through the window of course triggering a couple of losses but that is okay they are not close enough to really harm us at least not yet we're going to Take agency of this balcony and then we're going to take it from there. Very good, keep them coming. Just for safety measures, Hunk is standing, uh, staying behind. I don't want them in our back. Hunk can easily just eliminate them one by one and block the ladder so that they cannot uh, join us upstairs. Getting a couple of nice shots in here. At the same time, Vector, who really needs the leveling. We'll get some extra XP by just killing them. Very nice. And for now, since we have been detected and not all of them have been eliminated, might as well move in. Some can double move some others will just uh, stay back and give us overwatch protection reloading with vector to keep that uh, momentum going we got an auto loader here so we don't need to reload yet good and not very surprisingly we have killed all of them Good, moving up without yet fully moving in. I want to take control of uh, that balcony as mentioned. All right, Hunk is still hanging back here. All right, Done. let's take the balcony. That's one. That is two. That is three. And True Rebel can position himself over here. The person that's going to scout out without a shadow of a doubt will be our mech.
All right, got a couple of losses here. Not the end of the world. I think instead of shooting at them, we're just going to go in further. You just need to have enough distance to the loss so that they can't reach you in one round. And with that tactic, you're usually absolutely fine. They will not attack the VIP here, by the way, unless we move into the circle, at which point the VIP becomes targetable. These guys are going to move towards us, and by doing so, they are, of course, provoking the overwatch shots. Okay, cool. Just ran dry of ammo. They've got nothing to hold back the loss now. Menace one five, get to their position on the double. So interestingly enough, we cannot even see anyone up here. But I do have an idea how we're going to deal with the situation. Whenever you know how to aggressively move forward, you can abuse quote unquote the inability the inability of the loss to do anything meaningful. Once you position correctly. And uh, that correct positioning. Okay, so we could position there. Fair enough. That correct positioning is first of all moving the VIP into safety. Then I would like to overdrive. Ninety-nine percent is not a hundred percent, so we're not even going to entertain that. We're blocking uh, the way of any lost that would be able to follow us, and now it's time for some shooting exercise. Good. Next turn we can kill a couple more. For now, we're fine with uh, simply sticking where we are. Reloading overwatching. And although it might look like there are a lot of losts, that's really not going to be too much of a problem. Because it's rather a question if they will be able to reach us or not. Wow, the rookies are really bad at shooting. <laughs> oh boy, if they don't have the high ground advantage. Uh, and we haven't had the best luck in finding uh, scopes for our weapons yet. Only got PCSs and I don't want to use a PCS on a rookie. Yeah, high ground works out well for them, because they get that 20% bonus. And that kind of offsets uh, the uh, penalty for, for Overwatch. Fire. 
Firebrand is in position. Get back to the entry point for extraction before you get over. All right. We're picking up more heat signatures than the sensors can keep up with. Ammo's low. Good. We got an outloader, so that's a free reload gone on Halop. Got another auto loader here, so we can very much just shoot, and even if we miss, that's not going to be a large loss. All right, only got one shot, so uh, only got one target, so might as well just reload uh, to keep a healthy amount of ammunition. Yeah, so that uh, way, if you're actually missing, you're not left with a zero ammunition. Little trick to deal with the loss. So far, we're very solidly standing there. All right, time to clean up. You can see they are bundling down there, but the clustering will not help them. Good, let's reload. Like I said, keeping that healthy amount of ammunition. And just for my education, if you both were to charge, you would make it only, well, you would make it pretty far, but we gotta clear out all of the ground first okay cool yeah we can do that reload overwatch and we can overwatch here hunker down good to go Good. We just need to find the right moment to move over. The loss by themselves are not as dangerous. They're just numerous, so we gotta be careful. And of course, if you have 11 hit point loss and you don't have the between the eye uh, resistance order, you might end up not being able to kill them. Good, now that they are clustered over there and here, we will be able to essentially sprint over next turn. Reload. Wow, that's a perfect target. That's a huge swarm in there. Enemies down. Good riddance. Okay, so Let's just clarify how many 
we're talking about. I'm somewhat sure that we're talking about even more in there. Not sure why the scanner is only showing three. Gotta be careful with the explosives because it just triggers more loss. What I'm trying to do is essentially to get as many of uh, them away from the landing zone so that we can make our exit. Good. Reload Overwatch. Got another Overwatch here. Got another Overwatch here. Good. The mech can always move a bit faster. So we might be able to stay back here for now. Already seen that we received a promotion just for the efforts of killing all of them. But we're now going to let the VIP run across. Target destroyed. Targeted unit down. Good. I'll prefer to reload instead of overwatch. Oh, we can no longer just jump down, so they they bundled up so closely that it is difficult for us to even jump out of there. Okay, fair enough. Let's use, uh, shall we use a rocket? Probably not. If we move up here, that'll be safe because they cannot directly move up here. They need to take one of the other ways up. Good, so that blocks uh, them and prevents them from essentially joining us immediately. Good. Now a Lost Swarm is going to join every single round. And as long as they own, uh, as long as we kill the Dashers, we should be fine. Those are usually the ones uh, that cause the most problems. But thanks to our rookies here, we're really not running into trouble. Okay, first things first, uh, the VIP. VIP just basically runs for the exit at this point. Double movement all along. Reloading, Reloading Overwatch. We got an overwatch over here. Reloading overwatch. Come get some. Ready to go. Reloading overwatch. I'm on it. And we got another overwatch. Good. Which brings us to Vector. Hostile target eradicated. 
Killing the ones that are the closest. And then I think we're just going to move over to here. Thanks to his ability to just traverse onto the ground and just take high ground whenever they want. The mech is perfect as a scout in, in this particular mission. As always, our Overwatch shots are not the best, let's put it that way. Some of the dashers are really fast. Menace one five, keep pushing towards the evac point. No matter what you do, you're never gonna make a dent in the lost. There's just too many coming in. Okay, well, that is interesting. Advanced stock means that two hit point enemies are dying immediately. Let's try to get these guys down. All right, we're keeping a little bit of extra ammunition. But other than that, full movement to the extraction zone. Good. Everybody, get the hell out of here. Vector is going to be the point person covering everyone. Unfortunately, he missed the dasher. And that's where our fire protection from Hunk is coming in handy. Back online. Good, let's try to get the dashers down. Unfortunate. All right, VIP first. Let's move him out of here. Got the goods. Firebrand is the VIP safely on board the Sky Ranger. On the move. Good. We're already withdrawing everyone here. And Vector should be fine. Let's get the team out of here. More and more losts are now going to 
start coming in. But since we all got, already got the promotion on Vector, there's no point in slaughtering all of them. And I also don't want to draw out uh, the mission time longer than absolutely needed. I guess I showcased well enough how you can, with a solid positioning, just prevent them from ever reaching you. There we go. Ready to and we're good to go. That's it. Another good slash flawless mission. The only reason why we only got a rating of good is because we didn't secure that other soldier. We didn't need to. Like I said, it doesn't matter for our run. Good. Here we go. Let's come back to the base. There, we got the promotion on Vector and that's what we were looking for. So, gotta promote the Spark to the Cavalier up level. And here we got two interesting abilities. Intimidate on uh, the one hand side is really for a more tanky sort of Spark where you're regularly being attacked um, and where there's the chance to panic. On the other hand, Wrecking Ball allows you to move through cover and walls. In some of my playthroughs that Wrecking Ball ability was uh, fantastic because it allowed you to just destroy cover. In some cases you could even kind of run through cover whilst you were flanking another enemy and whilst doing that you, you were able to remove cover for other people that wanted to shoot at it. The Intimidate is more of a better strike-ish feature where you're regularly getting hit and or where people are tr regularly trying to hit you. Maybe also having um, uh, having a, the aid protocol from the uh, specialist on you. So it's not the strongest tier ever. I personally like Wrecking Ball a lot. But in this run, I think, given that we do not have um, a high amount of defense so far, might want to go with Intimidate, because that way multi-shots um, cannot, uh, cannot happen. It will not work on Chosens, but since the Sparks at this point are our tanks, might as well start using them as such once the armor is upgraded they can actually take quite a punch so we got ourselves 104 intel which is fantastic um, thank you so we're good on intel let's deploy in order to just speed up um, finding the skirmishers that'll be important with the skirmishers i hope that we'll get kind of um, missions to or more mission variety so that we might get a mission to reduce the avatar progress that would be fantastic we're getting another engineer in a second and then i wanted to also visit the black market in the hopes of finding something that could help us finding something that could help us with just how how bad the avatar progress has hit us so far So let's get the engineer. Perfect, that's another engineer. And that's exactly what we were looking for. That is exactly what we were looking for. Before we investigate that, the facility lead, uh, the, the game realizes we definitely need support and it throws us a facility lead. That's what I like about XCOM, you always have that uh, chance where the game is supporting you. Alarium crystals might be a good idea because we're um, requiring them as well and 50 intel is actually a pretty decent price for 35 crystal. Yeah, I was hoping that we would find the um, facility lead here, but we did not. But I will buy the crystals with 
that. We do have overall 44 Ilarium, which is enough to continue our research. So a bit of change of pace here. All of a sudden many things are happening in our favor. We're definitely researching the Ilarium crystals. I mean, plasma weapons versus the other option is to upgrade the Psy lab. Which we would have 15 Elarium and we could get an upgrade of the armor, spark upgrade. That only costs 5 Elarium, so both together would, would be 25 Elarium. No, I think we're uh, the research for Elarium will be better. Let's do that first, just to utilize what we've done, uh, the lab rush in getting that done. Look at that, eight days for Elarium, this is just crazily fast. And there is a lot of follow-up research that we could do. And really what we're going to do here is we're now going to go for the facility lead. That will open the option to kill one of the facilities in the near future. Good. Wonderful. We got ourselves a second spark. Don't need either of those. The frost bomb might be interesting. It's not a bad it's not a bad device we're having a heavy weaponry anyways here can't afford another spark plasma grenades definitely would be a nice advantage and exosuits mm, let's wait for the uh, let's wait for the heavy armor so uh, that works well we're going to empty this because the heavy weaponry is not that important. And instead, I would like to... start excavating here. You can already see having that extra excavation uh, going will speed up our progress in getting more resources, but it'll also speed up kind of building new uh, buildings that are needed. So certainly help to have that extra engineer. Let's continue with the facility lead. They are further slashing down our income, which means we need to expand and or kill them soon. Uh, get a pretty healthy amount of Elarium and alien alloys. So we're going to go for resistance communications next. In order to do that, we're putting another permanent engineer here. Sucks because it takes away from, from our ability to excavate. But we're definitely in the need of uh, more connections, so That'll be the next thing we need to buy, uh, to build. 16 days, so that's good. With a facility lead together, we're, I think, fine. Psylab could be upgraded, uh, but we don't have enough power. The Elarium crystals would be good. What else can we do engineering-wise? We could either build the reinforced upgrade you know what, let's do that. The armor upgrade for the sparks is actually quite good. None of that is relevant for us. Can we build another spark is the question. Some supplies are missing. But we theoretically could build another spark. And I think we're going to do that. It's Rise of the Robots at the end of the day, Saiken, so... 
Duh. Of course we're building another spark. Just one day of getting that. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at the events. New construction, that's bad, but we could handle it. And this is probably what we need to do. It will give us Intel back, which is great. We can buy a lot of good things with Intel and it will prevent an immediate spike to uh, the maximum avatar level. So that's, that's the mission that we're going to go for, guys. That's going to happen next. In the meantime, I think we're at the end of uh, this uh, session. If you enjoy the content and enjoy the Rise of the Robots campaign, then leave a big fat like and a comment down below. You know how the deal uh, works so far. And see you all in the next episode. Bye bye.